Well, today, uh, it's been a while since my daughter's been on. I'm keeping an eye on her this morning, so uh, I have Mila joining me. I've I'm I'm trying a couple of things here. We got we got the we got the toys, and then I'm hoping this is the secret weapon. Cucumber. I think I think uh, it may keep her occupied, but if she ends up uh, choking or something, I'll have to pause this and uh, take care of that. So far, so good. She loves cucumber. Just al always eating it, as as you can see. I think it's the perfect thing for a baby, because it's a little a uh, little tough. It's nice and cool. Also delicious, if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, whatever. So what I wanted to go over today is. Uh, I have one of these executive roundtables tonight, uh, and uh, we're we're really it's it's a I feel fortunate to be involved in these because I get to talk with a bunch of different people. Uh, in this case, I think they're uh, mostly from French companies, uh, just about like what they're doing with uh, their digital transformation. And you, I mean, you know what I mean by that. What they're doing, as I'll get into, with uh, fixing up the way they do software to fix up the way they do business. And I give like a little short 10 minute talk during these. I find it's like, especially for these online things, it's a, it's a pretty good way of doing things. So I just wanted to uh, rehearse the little presentation that I have. I've given it several times, but it's always nice to get it recorded so that when people ask me uh, for this stuff, I can just say, watch this. And then I get more eyeballs. Hopefully they, uh, they uh, as my kids videos say, slam on that like button or, or, or whatever. It is you kids do with your internet stuff. So anyways, let's go over to uh, to the slides. You know, as always, I'm gonna stay in uh, in in the old the old slide view. You can see I'll just give a little bit of meta information about these slides. So again, this is for like, oh, look how much room we got for like a ten minute presentation that's meant to sort of like, provoke people talking and uh, encourage them to start sharing with each other. That's what we like to do at these these uh, round tables, these executive sessions. It's like the best ones are where people actually just start talking about themselves, about successes and failures and things that they have. Now you can see I've got a lot of hidden slides here. I'm not going to go over those. But these hidden slides are just like common things that come up. So it's uh, nice to have a, common questions that come up. So it's nice to have a um, slide for it. I don't know. <clears throat> All right. Hey, well, thanks for coming to uh, our roundtable event here. I just want to kick off by sort of uh, setting the context or the table, as it were, the roundtable, uh, for, for what I think uh, is always a valuable conversation to have with people like yourselves. And that is really thinking about what does is, what is this idea of doing software better mean? What does it mean to do digital transformation and all those sorts of things? Um, and I know a lot of you here are interested in that topic, right? Like we would like to improve the way we do software so that it, uh, we can improve the way that we do business. We want to operate like a tech company. We need our apps to be better. Whatever. Let me make sure. Oh, do you need another cucumber? Let's see. Let's see if that works. So, you know, we want to improve uh, the way that we do software so that we can really operate more like a tech company and start to use software as the primary way we operate our business or a storefront or however it is you're, you're conducting the business. And uh, like I was saying, most of the people, you know, who are, who are with us here, you're interested in this topic. And what I find with or the types of organizations you're from, which are large organizations, uh, usually the issue is, is one, understanding the, the sort of modern contemporary way of doing software, but then really it gets down to figuring out how to scale it up to a large organization, a large existing organization. I'm going a little long here, but whatever. Cucumbers. So I think, I think just to, to state it briefly, right? Like when I talk about doing software better and I think, I think when hopefully when a, a lot of y'all are kind of thinking about how you're going through changing and transforming things, I think it's good to have kind of like a base level of uh, what the goals are. And, you know, let's focus on if you have a, uh, a customer facing thing um, when, we, when I kind of talk about this. I mean, if you're working on 
manufacturing things that don't necessarily have like a consumer view of things. Like think about who the user is or the goals using it, like if it's an inward facing application. But, you know, I'll just kind of speak in terms of kind of retail-y, you know, business to consumer things, but it easily translates into other things, uh, you know, especially into government work. But a lot of a lot of what people are driving towards is we want to improve the customer experience of our applications. We want our software to be good and useful and actually help people in the workflows that they're doing, help us conduct business with them, help our internal facing workflows, whether it's like mortgage approval applications or looking through all of the analytics that you're getting from, uh, you know, machines and factory things, whatever it may be. But we have this app that is used as the main interface into our business, right? And we want to improve that experience. We want to have good software. And the reason we want to do that and the thing we want to do around it is like, it's not only just improving the existing business and way that we're doing things, but you also want to improve the business itself, change what your business models are, change how your business functions, uh, have something more strategic that you're offering, right? And we've seen a lot of this uh, in recent times as businesses have had to scramble to adapt to people staying at home mostly, right? I mean, most most obviously is uh, grocery stores where they had to not only scale up to the ability to do you know delivery as many were already doing, but they had to explore new ways and new features to add to make that experience better, right? To remain competitive when there are other grocery stores available and also to optimize the way that they're working. But I've witnessed here in the Netherlands with uh, the grocery store that I uh, buy from, Albert Hein, um, that they, they've gone through a lot of different changes uh, with their software uh, over the past couple of years that really improve that customer experience the way that I interact with them, whether it's when I'm in store or uh, we're having uh, food delivered. So that's, I mean, that's really the drive uh, that organizations are going towards. I mean, those two things. And, you know, think about how that translates to what you're doing. And, and the point that I want to emphasize here is that you're always thinking about how can I use software to not only improve, but like change the way the way that I'm doing business. Um, and that's that's what we're seeking for with changing how how we do software. Now, let me take a, uh, a quick cucumber break here. Make sure. Cause I see, see, I think what happens is she doesn't actually eat them all. They just drop down on to the floor. So I've I've only got three more. So I'm going to have to talk fast. Uh, I don't think she saw that one. Uh, also, as always, Sophie, you got to get one of those. So now, most large organizations that I talk with, initially, it seems like a daunting task and it seems very difficult. But, uh, you know, I like I like to show this slide one because it shows off what customers we work with have been able to achieve. But these are all from, I don't know, normal non-tech companies uh, from telcos and manufacturers, insurance companies, retail stores, uh, you know, what, whatever, whatever you may be doing out here, it's spread out. It's lots of government. There's government people. But you can see that there are actually what I would say pretty dramatic improvements that I like to bucket into two areas. Now, technical improvements as a former programmer, those are always great, right? You can see that there's productivity increases for, you know, developers working more. You've got... Uh, you know, the ability to hold, hold on a moment. Let me let me get these up here. Our floor is very clean, so don't worry about that. Uh, but you know, clearly by switching over the tools that you use, the technology to a more modern cloud native ways of doing things to agile software development, um, your development teams, your operations teams, they get huge uh, increases in in uh, goodness. Boy, I really worded that well in, in what they're doing. Um, but what I'm more interested in, as you can imagine, are the business improvements on the other side. Again, what's being focused on in at least the, the things I'm interested in is how are we using our custom written in-house software to change and improve the way that we do business, right? And so you can see, you know, an increase in online ordering, an increase 
in uh, enrolling people into things. Uh, the ability um, when, you know, as happened in the spring, all these new you know governments were sending out all these new loan programs, the ability for banks and other institutions to very rapidly put those new programs in place, right? Not only, you know, consumer facing things, but also the internal process of approving and verifying loans. And you see these kinds of things in organizations that are changing and transforming how they do their software over and over again. So so the the improvements are actually possible, and again, you know, I I can go over where each of these are from, but these are from your peers, from large organizations that are not traditionally tech companies or um, awesome at software, and and just by thinking about software differently and changing around the tooling that they have a little bit, they've been able to uh, achieve both of these types of results. Now, for those of you watching the video you can probably take a bio break now because you've seen me talk about this all the time, but it's good to like go over this baseline. Um, so speaking of, what is that mindset of software, right? And you've probably heard this distinction of project versus product. And the mindset uh, that I think w I see organizations going to that get those results is really all about taking this very simple product-oriented way of doing things. There's all sorts of names for this approach. I mean, going back to the scientific method, but a lot of the times people think about this as the lean startup approach. And that is, instead of software being something that you specify with a bunch of features um, up front, developers write it and you kind of have that thing, you've manufactured a piece of software, so to speak. Instead, you have a process that's continually discovering what should be in the software, examining if you have the right thing. Uh, measuring it and figuring out how to improve it and constantly going to that process, not only to get it right, but to actually improve and make better what those features are. And, you know, you probably see this in some of the software that you use where they kind of seem to play around with what the features are, what the feature set is, how it's implemented, how it's done. And, you know, if you look at here in the Netherlands, most, you know, one of the more famous example is Booking.com, uh, who is extremely uh, mature in this area, but they're able to run thousands of experiments a day. Now, I imagine that's like, you know, pixel placement of buttons and uh, little things like that on their UI. But they have this process in place to always be refining. How do we get people to finally book something, right, to transact? Um, so that process, you know, I, I think of it as a small batch loop. And it really is this idea of having a theory of what you're doing, coming up with how you would experiment, write the code, deploy it to people, measure it to see if your theory was right. And if it was right, solve another thing or refine it more. And you go through that process over and over again. And so when you get to the point where you can do this weekly, even monthly, or, you know, luck, if you're really lucky daily, you really start to be able to evolve your business. You get to that thing that I'm always interested in, which is how are we improving and changing the business with software. Now, I'll just give you a brief example uh, and then and then wrap up here. But this is an example from uh, Daimler. Again, if you're watching the video, you've probably seen this several times. But there's a team there that works on, let's call it the front end for the buying experience. Uh, you go there and you search around for Mercedes that you would want to buy. You can configure them, make hot rods or station wagons, things like that. Um, but what this team found, the, te the software teams that were running this, is that people were searching for these sprinter vans. Um, but of course, this is a completely different part of the business because why would the sprinter van, why would plumbers and, uh, you know, dads with kids like mine be interested in the same things? It's completely separate businesses. Uh, and so, uh oh, let's see what we got here. So there's one cucumber. Let me see. Oh, oh. One of them slipped right down here. So there we go. So uh, these two lines of businesses were, were separate. But what they found, this team, is that when people were searching for those station wagons, there was a significant amount of people who were searching for vans, for these Sprinter vans here. So because they had this curiosity, because they were thinking of their software as a product of part of the business, uh, they came up with this theory that, you know, it wasn't just plumbers looking th for these vans. There were people actually interested in buying them. And their theory was that, well, what if we put in the work to actually display this to them? So, you know, it was a lot of work, as, as I'm sure you can understand in a large organization, to combine together two business units, IT, you know, ERP systems and stuff. But when they went through that change, they actually, they not only changed the software, they changed the way the business functioned, right? And they discovered, of course, that there were people like the, the Kinesis here 
who wanted to buy these vans to go on trips or, you know, to build out as an RV or, I don't know, just to have a van. Maybe it's like some tiny house Instagram influencer on TikTok or something. Um, but they made this discovery. They had this theory and they were able to transform with digital, with software, how bi the business was functioning because of that, because they went through this loop. Now, that is in a business sense, a very big uh, change, right? It's kind of a, a, a small little example there, but that's the kind of end state that you wanna get to with software is that we're not just making the way that we do software better, the way that we run software better, but we're really focusing on how do we use software as a core way of innovating our business and making our business better and exploring how we change uh, what our business models are and our strategy. And not even from a management consulting way of prescribing what to do, but actually doing it uh, as the team at, at Daimler could do. So um, I spent a lot of my time. Uh, what, what's going on? All right. I'm deploying another cucumber piece. Here, here we go. This is a good one. Look, look at how wide. Uh, let me get a, it's a nice wide cut there. I'm gonna put this over here. So. I spend a lot of my time, I mean, that's just sort of like the goal uh, and an example. And, you know, I know we're going to have some, some, uh-oh, some, uh, she keeps, where'd, where'd that Sophie go? Let me, let me find, oh, there we go, there we go. And she's, she's stashing all these cucumbers back here. Here we go. You got to bring that hand forward. Uh, I might have to find some other stuff here. What's, what's wrong? You know what I should have done? Whoa, it's brought some water. Uh, this is always a good distraction. I know this is not really the best thing to give to kids, but if you have some variety, sometimes that's something. So I spent a lot of my time, uh, <laughs> get a load of that. I spent a lot of my time on what happens after that, right? What are the barriers and the blockers that we have to getting to that point? Um, and this is just a selection of them that we can uh, kind of, Huh. Let me see. How about sunglasses? What do you think of that? Yeah. Hopefully she'll be okay. Uh, but, you know, and, and I have these listed here as potential things that, uh, that, that we could discuss and go over. It's a lot of what I spend my time talking about in the, these daily videos that I do and books that I write up. But rest assured, you know, one, one takeaway from here is that the problems that, that you might be having, uh, everyone has those problems. And as the, the kind of, uh, you know, uh, what would you call it? As the, um, those examples, I'm a little, a little scrambled up from Cucumber Girl back here. Uh, but as, as those improvements of technical and business improvements have shown, right, like, your peers, people like yourselves are getting over these barriers and it's actually possible, right? Sometimes you have to rethink how you're uh, contextualizing or thinking about the problem. And sometimes the answer is just straightforward, if tedious. Uh, but we can, we can talk about those in a little bit of Q&A or uh, kind of the breakout sessions that we have. So, you know, with the little bit of time we have left and also kind of guiding uh, the rest of what we're talking about, it'd be interesting to hear uh, from, from a couple of you, one or two of you, like what projects you're working on, right? Like what are the kind of the business-driven ideas that you have or just IT if, if you're interested in that. And it's always good to know not only what's working and how people have gotten over problems, but I find it's also in a group setting like this, nice to know what's not working, even if there's not a solution to the problem. It's, uh, it's often good, let's call it enterprise therapy, to uh, share and uh, see what other people are doing. So with that, thanks. And I appreciate you putting up with, uh, with the cucumber girl back here. Why don't you like cucumbers anymore? What, what happened? How about Miffy? Miffy's pretty exciting, huh? Um, maybe I need to get her some of those, uh, those finished, not Miffy, what are they called? Not Mojos, the, uh, I don't know, those big finish things. Uh, so that's what I got here. You know, if you want to get the archives for this, you can go to tanzutalk.com. You can find the show notes for this episode, uh, all the past archives, things like that. Also, I don't have much time for a CTA here because the cucumber girl, my beloved daughter. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you're really interested in this kind of stuff, you can email me up at codem, 
C O T E M at VMware.com. And, uh, you know, I can help direct you to some people who can talk about it more. You can also book some office hours with us uh, where you can start to kind of like get some consultative stuff from us and kind of kick off thinking about what, uh, what it would look like to kind of like start putting together your strategy or kind of like attack, <laughs> attack, or start working on this, this kind of stuff from all different angles. And, um, you know, uh, again, if you go to tanzutalk.com, you can find links to all that stuff. And as always... At the end of the video, uh, I'll put some links in to that kind of stuff and a reference for another video. Hey, it's always nice uh, as I build up momentum here. If, uh, if you can help me spread this around, you know, post it in LinkedIn. People seem to like that place. You can uh, repost it elsewhere or just, uh, you know, use the little thumbs up thing. You could use the thumbs down thing if you don't like it. That's always fun. I love seeing a thumbs down thing for certain types of content that's just sort of like banal business stuff like mine and thinking like wow who had such an opinion and so much passion around this boring stuff that they uh didn't like it uh so that's uh that's something but uh yeah with that we'll see everyone tomorrow bye bye